Rumour has it that the new Large Hadron Collider at the European Particle Physics Laboratory, CERN, could produce tiny black holes that might swallow Earth. Physicists don't share this concern and think that such black holes would actually shed light on one of the most elusive frontiers of science. The question of how two fundamental theories of physics, on quantum mechanics and gravitation, could be merged in a single theory of the world. At the energies available in the particle accelerators, black holes can only form if theories are right that invoke small-scale spatial dimensions in addition to the three dimensions of everyday space. A well-known such approach is string theory, which attempts to join gravity and quantum mechanics. In the 70s, Stephen Hawking and a group of physicists in the Soviet Union came to the conclusion that microscopic black holes actually emit more radiation and particles than they can swallow. This means that they evaporate almost as quickly as they form and makes them observable as an expanding cloud of particles. So, before they do any harm, microscopic black holes virtually explode in a shower of particles that provides invaluable information for physicists who want to know how the quantum world of gravity works. The Big Bang at the beginning of the universe might have generated primordial black holes. The typical remaining primordial black holes will have a mass that is not larger than that of an asteroid, but in a volume smaller than a single atom. Effects like random density fluctuations, as well as the transitions that lead to the separation of the four fundamental forces, could have been responsible for the formation of primordial black holes. Theoretical researchers have identified observable signatures of the early evaporation of the smaller holes. Observers can now look for these signatures in the cold cosmic microwave background and in the highly energetic gamma ray bursts, as well as in several other phenomena. The next bigger thing in black holes comes as the remains of massive stars like Eta Carina, after they shed most of their gas by way of stellar winds and their final explosion that generates the black hole core, a supernova. If the initial mass of a star is larger than about 20 solar masses and its energy resources from nuclear fusion are exhausted, the core of the star suddenly collapses in a fraction of a second. Some of the collapsing material rebounds and drives a shockwave through the undisturbed outer regions. The shock accelerates everything on its path to several thousand kilometers per second. The black holes that supernovae leave behind can best be observed when they occur in close binary systems. As soon as the secondary star evolves to a giant, it may be large enough to transfer mass to the black hole, leading to the formation of an accretion disk and characteristic brightness variations in X-rays with ejections of relativistic radio jets. Multi-wavelength studies of such systems have for all practical purposes proved the existence of stellar mass black holes. Black holes with masses of 100 to a million solar masses are not theory's favourite objects. From observation only, circumstantial evidence for them comes from galaxies with regions that show an unexpected high output of X-rays and from anomalous kinematic behaviour in globular star clusters. The most likely theoretical scenario for their formation is that of the collapse of an object that formed by successive collisions of a number of high-mass stars in a very dense star cluster. The ultimate black hole is an active supermassive black hole 
that in the process of sucking up its environment spews so much energy into space that we can see them as far away as no other object in the universe. The evidence from relativistic radio jets, variability from radio to X-rays and the kinematics of stars near our galactic centre leave no doubt that there is nothing else that could produce the observations. Supermassive black holes share many of the characteristic phenomena with their stellar cousins that are located in close binaries, albeit the time and energy scales are vastly different. Active galaxies, quasars, blazers, radio galaxies, Seifert galaxies and, surprisingly, our own Milky Way harbour black holes of millions of solar masses at their centre. Together with stellar mass black holes, there is virtually no doubt about their existence and quiet versions of them are likely to sit in the middle of almost all major galaxies.